Hello, you awesome friends. This is your pal, Edward Deer speaking. Welcome to another interview with Edward. And I'm going to say I'm so excited because you're handsome, you're beautiful, you're sexy, and you're watching me. And we've got another winner to help you win big in the post-COVID world. Now, this guy is actually a great friend of mine. He's been one of my friends and partners for many, many years. He was the best man at my wedding a very long time ago. And you know what? He's an amazing gem. He's a co-founder of one of Australia's top agencies called MindArk Digital Agency. He's been in e-commerce for over 10 years and the man is very humble and I'm here to help shout his praises. Matt Craig, how are you today? Thanks, Ed. Good, good. How are you? Now, Matt, you are a humble man. It's an honour to have you with us on a show. Matt, I just want to ask about you very quickly. Can you tell us a bit more about you and how you and your companies adds value to other companies and people's lives? Yeah, um, no problem. Um, yeah, so I guess as, as you introduced, um, yeah, part of the MindArk Digital Agency, we are an e-commerce agency that we specialize in e-commerce and, and obviously predominantly work with retailers here in Australia, um, helping them essentially make sure they have the right infrastructure to, to deliver that really good e-commerce experience for their customers. And it's incredible. You've worked with some top brands and you have taught me so many amazing things about digital marketing to the point where is, these days I'm quite a big influencer on LinkedIn and you've really helped me get there. And what I want to ask you, Matt, is how has the whole COVID-19 corona situation, how has that impacted you and your clients' world? Yeah, definitely. I think, I think a lot of people know that, um, particularly in the retail space, um, obviously very much so in the physical retail, it's been, it's been really challenging. Um, with all the, the lockdown restrictions um, and, and those types of uh, things being imposed, it's, it's obviously been impossible for physical retail to, to really operate at its peak efficiency. And I think um, we felt that a little bit, particularly at the beginning when a lot of these um, restrictions were announced. You could see companies were, were taking steps to make sure that they had to obviously change the way they were doing business or, or really pull things back in, in terms of you know organizing staff and, and, and obviously commitments from a liability perspective and they were just trying to manage all their expenses and that at the beginning it was scary like we, obviously we saw some of our our own clients just really struggle and um wonder you know how long they could survive through this crazy period and, and i think that was very much so the first couple of weeks um which happened towards the end of march i think it was or even early march when people started feeling this coming um and then I think we started to see um, very much a shift in the way people were thinking in, in April, at least, um, from what we, we felt is a lot of companies realized that the best way for them to do commerce during this type of environment was um, doing it online. Um, so that, that almost counterbalanced um, you know, all, all the disruption that we felt from um, the physical retail restrictions. And we felt a lot of um, you know, different brands and different merchants were trying to really enable digital. And, I feel like that was, that was a smart move. Obviously, the, uh, digital e-commerce is still happening and you can still order online. And obviously, like, luckily enough, like, uh, I guess warehouses and, and shipping providers and stuff are still operating. Um, so it's really facilitating that type of commerce. And um, yeah, I think that, that's been really exciting. I think we, we've seen businesses that we didn't expect invest in, in that side of, of digital as much do so or definitely consider it much more than they were probably going to. Or, um, Eventually, sooner or later, I think everyone was, was heading down, down that direction. But yeah, we've definitely seen that speed up due to the, the urgency of having to be it online, essentially. Yeah. It's funny you bring this up. And again, for our wonderful viewers, we've, uh, Matt and I have spoken a lot off camera about this issue. And we all know this. Even though Corona is coming to its thankful end, do you think the world's going to go back to the way it was? Uh, I, I don't think so. I don't really think that's going to happen. Um, I mean, I, I would like to think that we'll definitely get to that more normal situation where people will be comfortable to travel again and, and, and be social. I think that's really important and we're very much looking forward to, to having that back into the day-to-day -day, um, lives of it for everyone. Uh, but I think th this big event is def it's definitely going to shape the way things are going to be approached in the future, particularly from the um, importance of digital enablement and, and, and making sure you do have um, that, that digital commerce process and, and um, I guess, infrastructure set up so you can do commerce um, when something like this was to happen again. Um, and then, yeah, I mean, that's like the obvious um, impact. But then on the other side, it's also 
businesses that are now dabbling in, in the digital side of things a bit more, realizing how powerful or how useful um, e-commerce can be to really help um, your business. And I think, I, I don't think physical commerce will ever go away. I think that's always going to be, uh, have an important place for different types of product um, and different types of experiences and customers. But I think they, they should go hand in hand and work together to create the ultimate customer experience for, for everyone. Yeah. It's amazing you say that because even in, in our own business, the same things happen. So in the old days, people would like, obviously talking more locally here, people would usually want to meet me face to face where now Zoom is a common language, you know? So mm. I've actually, yeah. since Corona, thanks to Zoom, I've been having more meetings with ease. And I've got to say, you're spot on. The world is certainly not going to go back to the way it is. And I want to ask you, Matt, you're a very smart, powerful guy and you've got a lot of stuff. Before I ask you about Corona, I want to ask you about you and your team. Now, you've got, how many staff have you got these days? Every time I've visited you, you always tend to get more staff. How many are you at now? Yeah, yeah we've got about 40 staff across three different um, countries. Uh, so it's, it's definitely growing into quite a, a team and you know, it's really exciting to see that team grow and, and um, see the different um, individuals who like, grow in those roles and, and experiences and really help us build um, the company we're trying to build. So that's, that's really been exciting for us. And with, and during Corona, again, sort of um, just talking about you for the moment, I mean, you got 40 people across three different continents. During Corona, everyone's feeling a lot of stress, you know, everyone's under pressure. How did you keep your team connected? And how did you get your team so successfully through the Corona period? How did you manage that complexity with people all over the place? What'd you do? Yeah, uh, it's, it's a great question. And I, I definitely think this is probably a challenge that a lot of businesses have been facing. And I, I don't at all think that we did it perfectly, but uh, what we did do as best as we could was to make sure that we stayed connected with as many um, of the team members as we could. And, um, definitely set up the right communications about, you know, what this means as a, as a work from home strategy, like our whole team's working from home at the moment even in other countries. And, um, a couple of things we knew were going to happen. Obviously, I think people get a bit stir crazy being stuck in the same space all the time, and and not not having that you know uh, delineation between being at work and being at home. And so, um, obviously, mental health was a very important thing um, for us. And I think I've, you and I have had a couple of discussions about that as well. Um, but yeah, I mean, making sure that obviously when I guess the team gets bigger, you can't necessarily have one to one conversations with everyone constantly. So. We were telling our, our managers and then every time we had um, a team-wide meeting, so that we tried to do that once every couple of weeks uh, to just update everyone on how things were going, um, share, share what's happening with the business and to reassure them that you know, we, we had, we're taking steps to make sure that A, everyone was safe and, and B, everyone still had work. So um, we worked very hard to, to make sure that was happening over the last couple of months. Um, but yeah, definitely, I think the main things we, we did to try to keep the, the team going was, yeah, keep the positive vibe going, um, communicate to the team what's happening and, you know, just be real about what, what the situation is. And, and I think that, that was the easiest thing. Like we didn't want to promise anything to the team that, you know, we didn't believe. And um, I think everyone saw what was happening in the economy, like uh, friends and family in different areas are obviously impacted in different ways and people have lost their jobs. And, um, yeah, all, all kinds of different situations for different individuals. And I think, that, that made everything a bit more real for, for the staff, particularly they knew that, I, well, I hope they know that they were fortunate to, to still be quite busy and still have that, that work to do each day. Um, but yeah, definitely balancing that with, with mental health is, is very important. Oh, well said. And I was going to say, Matt, as all our viewers and you and me and everyone, as we go into the post-corona world, what are your three top pieces of advice for everyone to succeed and thrive in our new post-corona reality? <laughs> That's a great question. Um, top three for me. Um, I think if, if you can afford to at the moment, you know, start thinking about what post-corona looks like for your business. Um, I think that's the first one. I think it's very easy to get caught up in, in the current situation and not really try to proactively plan what's going to happen on the other side, um, particularly if you're obviously fighting fires and, and struggling with, different elements, like obviously common issues like cash flow and, and, and revenue and stuff like that. But yeah, as much as you can, like um, see if you can put together a plan for, you know, what happens after this and, and, and how that, what, what that means for the, I guess the product or the service that, that you actually provide. 
Um, and then I guess second to that, you know, stay positive. I think if you can stay positive and, and approach things um, as logical as possible, I, I think they'll make the right decisions. Um, try not to get, I guess, emotions take over and, and you know, you don't want to go into a panic or anything like that. And so, yeah, I guess that's another good tip. And then uh, maybe my last tip might be, you know, really value the team that you work with. I think um, for us, I, I think the team um, is, is what keeps us going. Um, and, and they're the ones that are helping us build this. Like without, without our team, we wouldn't be able to, to obviously um, deliver the services and products we do at MindArk and uh, make sure they're valued and, and that you, you can uh, hear them out as much as possible, I think is, is always great. Oh, Matt, extremely well said. I've got to say, always sharp and to the point and absolutely brilliant. And uh, <laughs> just uh, as well, as we start to wrap up this awesome interview, what is your final ultimate closing thought to the audience? What's the number one thing you think everyone should really keep in mind as we go into this new future? Okay. Um, yeah, that's, that's, a, that's a really good question. Um, I think probably it comes back to, you know, what, what's the most important thing. And I, I think having, having your, your health is, is definitely the number one priority. I mean, like your business is obviously super important. Um, and it's always, it's always easy to get caught up in, in different things, particularly around work and, and commitments and stuff like that. But I mean, no matter what happens, if, even if things, you know, go belly up and, you know, you have to pivot or change your business or shut it down, like at least if you have your health and that's, that's the most important thing, you can always come back stronger later and do something new. Um, so yeah, don't, don't let any failures let you down. I think that's important. Well, that's true because after all, um, you know, Brad Burton, one of our mentors and friends, he made the good point saying, if you're a person in ICU suffering from Corona and you're about to die, would you trade in your whole business for another shot in life? You certainly would, wouldn't you? 100%. Yeah. Yeah. I agree. Oh, Matt, so well said and thank you. And um, I got to say, great having you with us and thank you for donating part of your Sunday to us. And just before you go as well, Matt, how can people get in contact with your agency, MindArk, and you? How can they reach you? Um, you can uh, start with the website. There's more information at uh, mindark.com.au. Um, otherwise, you can hit up Evan on LinkedIn. I'm sure he'd be able to connect, <laughs> connect us together. Um, but, yeah, um, that's probably the easiest way is to find us. Oh, it's a pleasure. And just one last thing as well, Matt. I know you're a man who is brilliant and certainly uh, plays his cards close, close to his chest. What secret stuff have you got coming out, Mac? Is there any uh, secret cool stuff you can tell oh, us? Oh, secret stuff? Well, um, <laughs> nothing that I can reveal just yet. <laughs> <laughs> but I'm um, definitely, I think we're going to be launching a lot more. Um, uh, well, there's going to be a new website launching in the next couple of months, so look out for that. Um, it should kind of uh, provide a more updated version of, you know, what the business is up to these days and, and, and what, what we're um, aiming to do as, as a team and as a, as a group. And, I think that's that's exciting for us, and I'm excited to to launch that. Um, but otherwise, yeah, we're just going to keep, um, you know, try to do what we're doing and then doing it well and getting better every day if we can. Um, yeah, that's that's the main goal. Matt, well said. And just everyone, you've seen it. I've known Matt for a decade. Amazing, great guy. He's helped me become a LinkedIn influencer. Make sure you follow him, show him much love, and get in contact with the great guy. Final word to you, Matt. Just want to say thank you for being on our show, and we absolutely appreciate you. No problem. Thanks, Ed.